So uh, basically, femoral nailing is obviously the standard routine for orthopedic procedures. And as you heard, whether you do an anterograde or a retrograde, in the majority of cases, they do very well. So you might say to yourself, well, why do failures occur? That's so it's very intuitive. Uh, the nail and the femur are both uh, pretty straight, except for a mild bow. If your start point is not aligned with the middle of the shaft of the femur, the odds are you're going to have a problem. And we see that in the proximal portion here, very often lateral starting point, varus, knockoff part of the, the cortical contact. And the result is obviously a non-union, doesn't work, varus doesn't work, and needs to be revised. We also see anterior or posterior starting points for proximal nailing. And again, the telltale sign is you'll knock off the cortex and the opposite part in, in the subtrochanteric region. And obviously that is a failure. So your starting point proximally has to line up with the middle of the shaft of the femur. Distally, as you just heard from Anna, yes, you can do them, but with the common uh, failures are, as you see in these two examples, two anterior in the condyles, or lateral in the condyle. So you have to line up perfectly with the shaft of the femur, not with wherever you put the condyles. So the reduction of the condyles is key to get the correct start starting point. And then we have people that we all know that believe they can put a nail in any femur and uh, they consider it a badge of courage. And if you can't, you have, you're not really a trauma surgeon. So I think really comminuted subtrochanteric fractures are a problem, problem for me combination neck shaft fractures, and then very distal comminuted fractures. So obviously this surgeon should not have done a nailing. First off, he didn't understand nailing. It was the wrong nail to use and the subtroke fractures can be very difficult. So for me, a lot of subtroke fractures, which are complicated, uh, it's easier for me to open it up and to actually plate it than actually nail it. But whatever is good for you is good. Um, and then distal fractures, yeah, it's great to say we're going to retrograde all these periprosthetic uh, fractures. My problem with these is twofold. One is they use a computer to make sure the prosthesis is put in perfectly and then we nail it in deformity. That doesn't really make a lot of sense for the outcome for the total knee. But in other ways, also for fractures like this with more comminution distally, Nailing it like this, yeah, it looks okay, but no, there's no cortical contact of anything here. And you're asking the metaphysis to do a lot of work. Clearly, this doesn't heal, and you need to augment this with the plate and screws. I think the other th issue is any significant deformity, the residual deformity after your nailing is a problem, but we know varus, whether it's proximal or distal femur is the kiss of death because of weight bearing, the forces are magnified. And we've all seen failures that occur routinely. This is a just a time bomb. It's just going to fail no matter what you do. If you fix the proximal femur and varus, it will fail. And trying to do everything with a nail, this is a proximal femoral fracture and a distal femoral fracture in a markedly osteoporotic elderly patient. You can see the, the staples hadn't been even taken out yet, and the distal is failing with the screws backing out. So you can't really nail such a distal fracture in a big uh, metaphysis with two little locking screws and expect it to work. Uh, I'm sorry. I went back the wrong way. Sorry about that. And then you've heard about malrotation. Uh, no matter what you do intraoperatively, as David showed, uh, you, it's mandatory when you finish your procedure to evaluate the two uh, limbs. And I'll just show you the, what you don't want to see. Is This is a picture taken by the father in the recovery room of his daughter following a femoral nailing. Uh, clearly, the surgeon did not pay attention intraoperatively. Finally, uh, whatever you do, dynamizing femoral nailing, do not remove the interlocking screws or all of them because you'll end up with a malrotation. And the other thing is, how do you correct deformity with a nail? And there are two things. I think if you have a hypertrophic uh, non-union, you can remit and nail it, if, especially if it's in the middle third. But the other problem really is the start point. And it's very difficult to correct a, a poor start point. So this is an old case you can see with one of the old AO nails. Uh, it should be a piriformis nail, was put through the trochanter. It's in varus. It doesn't heal. They just took a bigger nail, put the same start point, 
again, unless you correct this, deformity will not heal. So it's key. Start points are very difficult to correct with the renailing. And for me, it's much easier if you're going to correct these deformities to do a plating. So in summary, start point proximal distally is key. Nailing uber alus, not a good thing. Displaced proximal or distal fractures, but especially varus, or leaving them with any varus is a problem. Malrotation must be determined before leaving the operating room. And revision nailing, especially start points, is inordinately difficult. Thank you.